Hello and welcome to today's Practical Insights webinar, The Skills to Become a Remarkable Marketer. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate. The presentation will last for approximately 40 minutes. You'll be able to send text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll collect and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Unfortunately, we don't send slides of the presentation. However, the webinar will be available to watch on demand via our Content Hub Exchange in the next couple of working days. I would now like to hand over to Imran, who will be today's presenter. Brilliant, thanks for that, Nick. I am excited to be presenting again uh, for the Chartered Institute of Marketing, an organization that is leading the way to educate marketers. Uh, so excited to be involved in a world leader uh, that is doing so many things out there for uh, marketers. So this um, presentation webinar we're doing today, let me say a few things before we uh, kick into the presentation. Uh, so my aim is to share as much as I can in this short session. There's a lot happening in the world of marketing. There's a lot, and generally there's a lot happening in the world um, and what you see in the news. Um, so there's so much noise around us, but there's one constant in this equation and that constant is you. So the question is, what are you doing uh, to stay on top of your game? What are you doing to survive? What are you doing to work your way to achieving your goals and your dreams? So before I kick into this presentation, the best way for you to um, view this presentation it is going to be a series of slides uh, there is a series of questions on the slides. Um, so if you if you connect with me on LinkedIn, which I'll give my details later, I'll, you can have a copy of the slides via my LinkedIn profile. Um, and don't worry if some of the slides are skipped through very quickly. Um, you will get these as questions uh, that you can run through. Um, there are challenges of running a webinar, uh, and I've attended many webinars myself. I'm doing my emails whilst I'm listening to something and got my phone on and many things. Um, so what I want you to do during this presentation is, if you can, um, turn away from your emails, maybe mobile phone away from me so you can uh, focus on this presentation. And, and this presentation is different because it's focused on you. So I'm not here, I'm not doing a marketing or digital marketing presentation. It, it, this presentation is about you and how I share ideas on how you will improve yourself. Therefore, you will gain a number of benefits. Um, also, uh, whilst I run through this presentation, um, look for the one thing, the one thing that you can take action. So if you've got a pen and a piece of paper, grab it. And if you have a light bulb moment or if you think, okay, actually, if I did that or if I answered this question, this would radically change my career, career, career in marketing or what I do write it down. And in fact, um, just out of interest, write it down, take a photo of it and, and, and send it to me via, via LinkedIn. Let, let's see what you come up with. Um, I've titled this webinar, no, has got the word remarkable in it. And it's taken from um, a, a quote from Seth Gordon. Um, some of you will probably know him. He's one of the biggest uh, marketing gurus in the world. Um, Seth uses this word rem remarkable uh, and and he uses this world because there's a changing shift in expectations in the world. And the standard has changed. So good is now average. So good is not good enough. There's a real challenge generally across um, what we do in work and, and so on. And what we find is a lot of people, when they achieve good, they stop and move on to the next thing. So there's very few people who move from being good to great or becoming remarkable. And sometimes remarkable is only a few inches away. And guess what? The rewards, the big rewards, the big opportunities are beyond good. And it's when you start becoming a remarkable marketer or a great marketer, that's when you achieve uh, larger benefits. It's interesting, I've been educating marketers for about 20 years, and if you, if you look back, 
marketing was quite a linear career path. You work here where you're like this chart shows you from a, an assistant to senior positions in marketing. But that's changed in the last couple of years with digital. And it's fascinating seeing this change because it, there's so many new entry level positions in marketing. It's, it's quite diverse. There's so many director level positions in marketing. In fact, I came across a, um, a job title. Um, somebody, somebody had advertised for a position, director of digital effectiveness. I looked at thinking, is this, is this a real job title? And the, the company had done the research on this and yep, we've got a position for this uh, specific uh, type of role. So it's fascinating seeing this growth. Um, and again, in the middle management, middle layer of this uh, equation, there's, there's just lots and lots of jobs um, and titles from content to digital to PPC to so on. So it's quite a, it's quite much in that, which is uh, quite exciting. If you're a freelancer or a consultant, um, this world is looking very exciting and I love uh, working with freelancers and consultants. So marketing, digital marketing has become a lifestyle career choice for those of you who are looking at becoming a freelancer. Um, if you do a Google Trends search, digital marketing is just in the sort of word curve. Uh, so congratulations, thanks for attending this webinar. You know, you're in a unique position right now. Um, I'm geeky with uh, LinkedIn. I check out a job title with the word digital and marketing in it. A couple of years ago, there was about a thousand people. Now there's over 12 million people with that in the job title. So you can see this uh, amazing growth. But I don't want to talk to you about statistics. I'm going to share a story with you um, based on uh, this quote from uh, L. Nightingale, uh, which I think accurately describes the situation you're in right now. And the quote here is, you, you are at this moment standing right in the middle of your own acres of diamonds. So the background to this quote is, it's about a story of an African farmer. He, ha he heard tales of other settlers who were making millions through diamond mines. So this excited farmer then thought, well, that's what I want to do. Um, he ended up uh, selling his farm and he started his life searching for diamonds and traveled great distances. Um, he ended up broke, desperate, and ended up throwing, in, throwing himself in the river and he drowned. Uh, the man who bought this farm, who paid very little money for it, uh, one day found an unusual object uh, which uh, turned out to be a, a diamond. And in fact, that area became the world's largest diamond mine. Um, so the farmer who owned the acres of diamonds sold it for nothing to look for it elsewhere. Uh, whilst um, uh, the, the moral of this is, if only he had taken the time to study and prepare himself and learn what a diamond looked like in its rough state. So each of you right now, because of where we are in marketing and the demand for marketers and the exciting times we live in, each of you right now is standing in your own acres of diamonds. So the challenge for you is to have the wisdom, the patience, the learning to capture the opportunities that you have around you. Um, a tiny bit about my background, I'm not, I'm not going to get into much, but I've been in this game of educated marketers for 20 years. Um, we run a CIM study center, we're part of uh, a joint venture with Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, I've been pioneering the development of online qualifications for quite a long time, including the digital marketing qualifications, part of the Charter University of Marketing, and also a Masters in Digital Marketing at the Manchester Metropolitan University. I've also gone very practical and been helping businesses implement sales and uh, marketing automation funnels, gen generating millions in revenue. Uh, my passion and purpose is to help marketers succeed. That's what I've set out to do, and I have a 2025 mission to help 10,000 marketers, including uh, freelancers. So that's me and what I'm uh, setting, setting out to do. Um, and uh, in this presentation is broken up into uh, three different areas. Um, because of the shortness of this presentation, I've actually wrote um, and talked about a lot more different piece, they're not the marketing piece, but the personal development piece. There's only three I'm going to cover today, and I've actually wrote a workbook uh, behind this. So if you want to connect to me, I'll, I'll send, you, send you a copy of this workbook so you can do things in, in a bit more detail. 
so, so the first point I want to, um, or part of this presentation, I want to go into is, is the pathway. Um, and I want you to think about getting clarity on the direction and destination you're going in. So the question here, have you designed your own pathway, your own uh, direction? Where are you going? And the thing with this is, if it's well designed, um, you're happy, you're making progress, you're getting satisfactions. If it's not well designed, um, it's a bit like browsing Netflix. You, know, you can sit there and browse Netflix and, and uh, for about an hour trying to look for something to watch. And you end up watching nothing because you're just spending your time just browsing. Um, so if your life is just browsing and not taking action, it's, 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 it's a real issue. Um, one of the things I want to make clear here is wherever you are now is important. It doesn't matter what experience you're having and the role you're having, you're in an important position. And I'll give you an example of Steve Jobs. He dropped out of college. And for a random reason, he decided to take a course on calligraphy. Little did he know that calligraphy course influenced how he designed fonts, which revolutionized all computers around the world. Uh, with, with the creation of fonts and, and different typefaces, which took place 20 years later. So every experience that you're having now, and as Steve Jobs says, the dots will connect at some point in, in the future. So it's important for you, no matter what your experience and where you are right now, uh, it's important for you to understand um, what is happening. In, ter in terms of where you are right now, uh, uh, speaking to many marketers, some of you might be a new you might be a new marketer. You're just starting your own journey. You feel as though you've got a mountain to climb. Um, some of you might just be the only marketer in your company, you know, and you're finding it quite lonely. Um, some of you might already have some kind of knowledge, but lacking a pr practical qualification. Uh, some of you might be limited to progressing because you're just hitting a wall. You're trying to progress from where you are now into a management position or a direct position, but you're, you're, you're struggling to break through that next level. Um, some of you might have years of experience, but you've never got an official qualification. So we'll talk a little bit about the CIM Digital Marketing Awards at the end, a way, a way for you to get an official badge. Um, some of you might just be spending time putting fires out and you've not had a chance to invest in yourself. Some of you might just be stuck in a company or an industry or you're working for a team or a boss that doesn't value you or doesn't understand you. Um, but in terms of where you're going into the future, you know, where, where are you heading? You know, imagine if you did have the knowledge and the skills and to manage your day-to-day activities, you could get promotions to direct level. Imagine if you're more digital savvy and you could react quickly. Um, some of you may have ambitions. There's nothing wrong with having targets or around money. You may want to earn more, two, three, five, ten times more than uh, what you're on now. Some of you may want the motivation to be working in a brand or a large company or a type of company or industry um, uh, that you that inspires you. Uh, some of you might just want to break, uh, as mentioned, you know, break free from a nine to five job, be sat in anywhere in the world uh, working. So you, you want to become a freelancer or a uh, consultant. In this part of the presentation, I want to cover two things. Um, number one, analyzing yourself. And number two, getting clarity in, best, uh, in terms of the direction and, and destination. So, so this this is um, quite important for you to reflect on some of these things I, I am going to talk about. So the first one is um, uh, a SWOT analysis. If you're all familiar with SWOT analysis, uh, marketing 101. I want to I want you to apply the SWOT analysis to yourself in a slightly different way. So there, there is a quote, when knowing yourself, you are empowered. When accepting yourself, you are invincible. So hence, it's important for you to reflect on your abilities, both which are strong, and ones that come natural to you. And this exercise will also help you uncover um, things that might be cloaked around you. They're slightly invisible. Um, Jim Collins talks about this headshot concept, uh, which these questions will help you form. You know, these are three things that need to be present for you to be extremely successful. Become the best in the world at something. What are you passionate about? What drives the economic engine? So here's, here's a series of questions to get you thinking through these. So the strengths, 
what are you naturally good at? What sets you apart? When other people see you, what do they say about you? What are your strengths? What areas are you are you accelerating in? Do you have any specialist skills? Weaknesses? We'll take a pause so you can just read these questions and have a think. What do you struggle with? What is your kryptonite? Or as Gary V would say, what is preventing you from crushing it? What is stopping you from moving to the next level? Opportunities. What are the ways you can raise your profile? What are the quick wins? What have you got that is worth um, a big financial revenue to other organizations? What's, what, what's your transferable skills? And this is something, again, I'm passionate about with the um, Charting Institute or marketing qualifications, the way they're designed. They have been designed with this in mind to give you transferable skills. So if you've already got a qualification or you're planning on doing qualifications, this is a key uh, driver. Um, threats, I'm afraid we do have some threats. Marketing um, is not protected like any other, any other role out there. Um, things are being automated and, and don't wait for things to be automated because there's parts of the marketing function which is already being automated. So there's a couple of questions for you, you to reflect on after this webinar um, on what would you do if some of your skills went out of date, especially if you're working in a very specialist digital area because things are being automated, which will get rid of certain, certain roles. The important thing here is not to um, see the threat, it's to see the opportunities. Okay, so let's um, go into um, some clarity style questions. So cl clarity is important. Um, so it's important to have clarity because it's going to allow you to take action and move, move on to the next thing quite quickly. Um, so a couple of questions here. So what are you pouring into your brain is quite important. Um, you probably heard the quote, your thoughts influence actions. You have to stand guard at the door of your mind what is useful information that you put into in, in, in your brain, what is entertainment, what's useless. So you have to, and there's a lot of information around us, unfortunately, as marketers. Um, so you have to figure out, okay, what, you, what are you letting in? What are the filters, important filters that you can uh, put in place? Um, there are many things that you might be worried about. Um, there's, there's some interesting study which uh, shows um, uh, when you, there's not such a thing as multitasking. <laughs> you, know, you might be good at task switching. But there's some interesting study that shows when you keep moving from one task to another, you're taking up uh, energy in your brain and nutrients. So you're, you're kind of slow, you're slowing your brain down. Um, so every day we're exposed and, and these days we jump from task to task. Um, so this is something to be really mindful of and I might touch on this later in the presentation as well. So what is your, your state? In fact, there's studies that actually say, you know, if you're in, a, if you're angry or fearful, or anxious, when you eat or drink, you're literally poisoning the food you're putting into your body. Uh, so this, and, and you've probably experienced it, this state of mind you're in, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's, it's quite important you're in the right state to capture the right opportunities. Um, your purpose. So, so this is. Um, uh, a very important component uh, and it's based on Simon Sinek. Um, I would recommend you go and watch his TED talk on, on the why. And it's important to clarify your why because it could be the catapult to do and explain what you're doing. And Simon Sinek researched uh, leaders and he found that people like Martin Luther King and all the influential leaders like Steve Jobs, they, when they talked, they all talked about the why why they do it, never explain how they do it or what they do. And it's important as a marketer to really um, have your why very fixed. 
what is your BHAG? Um, so if this term's new to you, uh, a BHAG stands for Big Hairy Audacious Goal. Uh, so it's an acronym that um, authors Jim Collin and Jerry Poros uh, came up with in their book Built to Last. And it's, it's, it's a goal that potentially scares you. Um, and the purpose of having this kind of goal, and, and there's other names for this as well, I've come across moonshot goals. You know, if you look at Google, they've got big moonshot goals. Their goal is to um, categorize the world's information. And it's fascinating seeing these moonshot goals because we're living in a time where it's actually possible to create a billion dollar company in two years. Never in history has that been possible. So these moonshot goals or these BHAGs are, are very interesting concepts. But the core concept for you to understand is when you have this kind of goal, it stretches you, it pushes you, it takes you out of your comfort zone and you start thinking very differently. So if you're a marketing executive right now, if your BHAG was to become a chief marketing officer in a large company, I mean, that's a pretty big goal because you just started, um, or a hairy audacious goal because you just started in marketing. But what that is going to force you to do is start thinking, actually, um, and it leads to the ne my next slide, is whatever your target is, whatever you want to become, somebody has already achieved it. So success leaves clues. So if it is um, uh, um, a chief marketing officer or whatever the um, goal is, it's important for you to think and connect with um, these types of individuals to learn from them. I'm going to finish this section with uh, two exercises that I highly recommend you do. If you, if you don't do anything off the back of my presentation, try these exercises. Um, and the future, future scoping exercises. So there's two exercises here. Um, and what they're uh, kind of designed to do is to try and imagine yourself in, in the future. In fact, um, Jeff Bezos from Amazon did this exercise before he set up Amazon. So obviously it, wor it worked for him because he's, he's, he's set up a gigantic organization. Um, so he, um, or the exercise is to imagine yourself in a rocking chair at the age of 85 sitting in whatever environment you want, sitting in front of the fire. So you imagine yourself in the future and you place yourself there and then you wake up and you lift all the regrets that you've um, put down, all the regrets that you should have done in your life. Similarly, uh, this exercise, again, I, I do this quite regularly just to as a checkpoint, um, is you could create a, create a perfect day in the future write down a timeline so you know write a 24-hour clock down on a piece of paper and write down what your perfect day looks like so when you're waking up where you're waking up what house you're living in where is it what you're driving and start building this uh, this uh, picture um, these exercises what they do is they'll create some intensity and allow you and they'll catapult you into action um, whenever whenever you need to so that finishes that section. I'm going to move on to the next section, uh, positioning. So we've covered path a bit there. Um, so positioning um, is is very important because we're now living um, in in a different time. Uh, and the question here is, how are you positioned in the mind of others? So if there's a job promotion out there. Or an opportunity, or whatever is taking place out there, are you the person that then people think of when there's an opportunity? If you're not, then you're just another person that's got to apply for jobs and do it the hard way around. It's quite difficult. Um, so this part of my presentation is about thinking about creating some kind of magnetic presence. One of the things I want you to have a think about doing in, in positioning is to think about um, your big three or your dream three. And these th three might be organizations or industries that you want to work in. Um, or if you're freelancing or you're consulting, um, these are three organizations that you'd love to get as clients. So at some point, have a think in depth about who your big three are. Thinking about these allows you to um, get organized, become consistent, 
and have a relentless plan to win your position in these organizations or acquiring these clients. Um, for those of you who are not strategists, um, I think this is more and more important because there's um, a lot of tactical marketers in the, in the marketplace and a lot of employers investing in tactics. But for you to become a brilliant strategist can actually drive a vision for a company. Think You can think longer term beyond the tactics. So you've got the ability to mix the tactics and the right level of tactics with the aim uh, to be hitting uh, longer term goals. There's a couple of things I'm going to just fly through here that I want you to just get your mind around. Um, and there's two areas. One, grab attention. Two, position yourself as an expert. If you look at um, your LinkedIn profile and other things, I mean, people stick their eyes and they've got about, you know, I think everyone's got about a six second attention span. So you've only got a, a couple of seconds to attract someone's attention. If you're at a networking event and um, if you're a CIM member, I'd recommend that you get to some of these uh, these events that take place. Um, you've got the opportunity to introduce yourself. So, you know, what are you introducing yourself as? Um, ultimately, if you want to attack your big three and become relentless and position yourself really well, you have to position yourself as an expert. So you've got an education based marketing strategy to get to your ideal position. So just with us through a couple of slides, um, there are quick models that you can use. So if you've only got six seconds to introduce yourself or you've got it in your LinkedIn profile, there are quick models where you've got to quickly introduce yourself, talk about your target audience and what benefit you're giving them. Um, and also there's, there's a bit of uh, positive thinking on the image on the left hand side. Uh, because a lot of people I speak to and ask them, how are you doing today? The answer is usually not bad or something negative. So, so maybe um, uh, if somebody asks you that next time, just say, I'm doing great. I'm doing excellent. If you are having a bad day, maybe just say, I'm doing unbelievable. I am unbelievable. Could mean any, any probably read as positive from the other person. 60 seconds. Um, uh, it's a bit like the elevator pitch. Uh, so if you do uh, grab all of my slides, there's a couple of questions here that you can construct yourself. So if you do get the opportunity to talk to people or get into interviews, you've got to have a very clear um, elevator pitch within uh, 60 seconds to three minutes. You can uh, position yourself uh, really well. Um, so in terms of um, the next bit, uh, some of you might be more experienced, therefore, you've got a way of doing things. Um, so say, for example, you find a process that you've been hugely successful in. So you may have a way or a model of doing things. And some of us actually sit on a lot of intellectual property. If you've got 10 years experience in marketing, you've figured out a way of doing things. It might be specific to your industry. You might not even be conscious of it. It's in there because you're doing it every day. So have a think about mapping this on out. Uh, because that is, is is worth quite a lot. For those of you who are getting up and doing masterclass and presentations, it's the ultimate way of um, uh, building a credibility and, and positioning yourself as, as an expert. Um, obviously, uh, in, if you're in the CIM framework, um, you know, the um, getting official certificate. Um, you're in a community of professionals. Uh, you know, certainly when I do a search on LinkedIn, there's over 200,000 people connected to um, the chart in CR marketing. And also, if you're going out for jobs, um, you'll see many employers and job specs which ask for a CIM qualification. So it's important. Uh, and there are specialist modules. Um, uh, for example, there's a module on uh, an award on digital strategy. So if you're very specific on becoming one of these. Uh, brilliant strategist, I'll certainly recommend that you look at um, the awards if you're not committed to doing a full qualification. Um, okay, good. Uh, so I'm just going to go into the last section that I have here. And, and whilst I know some of you already popped questions in, uh, thank you. So whilst I'm working through this, feel free just to drop, keep dropping some questions and we will get them, get to them at the end. Um, 
feel free to spend your light bulb moments as well and what, what you've thought so far as well. So feel free uh, to give some, give some feedback. Um, so I'm going into this part of the presentation. So I'm now talking about proficiency. Um, be, commit to becoming a master in what you're doing or a master mixer. Some interesting experience. So I, I had to present at an e-commerce event um, a couple of months back. And that, that um, uh, triggered me to look at jobs in e-commerce, which I've not looked at previously. I've always looked at digital and marketing jobs. And I was fascinated to see the growth in e-commerce. And I didn't, didn't know there was an e-commerce marketer. Uh, so it's fascinating seeing hundreds of job titles in e-commerce. But what hit me was um, the job specifications. I, I was really thrown off by the job specifications. They were expecting you to be good at customer acquisition, CRM, conversion rate, multi-channel, pay-per-click, SEO, user experience, analyzing campaigns, web analytics. I thought that's fascinating, you know, who, which kind of marketer has this mix of skills. So I'm going to talk in a little bit about a t-shirt marketer. But before I do that, I want to address this because it's, it's a real issue on all the marketers we're teaching and training. Um, first, first question is, what, what does it mean to become a master? How do you become a master of of anything? Um, and it's interesting um, seeing that because as a marketer, you've got about a thousand things that you need to learn. Um, and it's impossible to learn a thousand things, but what you should think about doing is maybe you learn how to do 10 things a thousand times. So let me just repeat that. Instead of trying to learn a thousand things as a marketer, why not learn 10 things that you do a thousand times which will give you um, a really strong skill set in what you're doing right now. So that's important to understand because you can't, it's almost impossible to go and learn everything. Um, uh, and, and marketing is getting too fragmented to uh, be able to do that. Now I've got this image on, um, and if you look at any martial arts sport, if you look at Taekwondo, um, if, you, if you do Taekwondo, if you're not, um, so Taekwondo, the, the people who do Taekwondo, they learn patterns at each belt. And sometimes I'll, I'll kind of look at it and think, you know, these guys are um, doing the same pattern over and over again at each level, and they're repeating it hundreds and hundreds of times. So constant focused repetition is what they're doing. And I want you to think of, of some of the disciplines or the uh, fragments of uh, different digital marketing skills in the same way is how do you constantly um, train yourself to become better at these things? Repetitive, constant repetition. Train yourself to run like a machine in these different areas. So the benefit of this is um, doesn't matter what happens around you, your job can change, the environment can change, um, when you've got your skills built to this mastery level, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter because you'll be able to handle any obstacle, any situation, any scenario that you're going to be put in. Your stress levels will be lower. Your satisfaction is higher. You can get there a, a, a lot uh, quicker in any 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 area of your life. Um, so you've heard the con you've probably heard the concept of t-shirt marketers. So it's something to have a think about. Um, it's about having a base knowledge which is solid um, and a marketing foundation and having expert uh, uh, expertise in channels. Um, the, it does, I mean, T-shirt is probably the wrong shape because I think in reality, you probably need a good base knowledge of everything and you probably need a couple of areas where you need to be really good at. And it also depends on what your job title is. So if you, if you are a content marketer, you know, there's going to be uh, specific elements of this T-shape or the M-shape, which are going to be more important than others. If you're working in PR or communications, they're, they're all different. So you've got to figure out, um, you've got to figure out where your, where your mix is, if, if, uh, if that makes sense. Um, a neater uh, way of um, benchmarking your digital marketing skills is to look at the race model, uh, which has been developed by um, uh, digital marketing guru, Dr. Dave Chaffee. If you studied, you probably read his book. So the race model is a good way of figuring out, okay, how do you benchmark yourself against all the different skills? 
Um, so there's a planning component before I jump into the race. So if you um, uh, benchmark your planning skills, you know, you're asking questions like, uh, can you set a vision? Can you set smart objectives? Can you define um, audience segments? Can you create personas? Um, can you create an online value proposition for the website or for a multi-channel experience? So this bit is when I talked about previously, becoming a brilliant uh, strategist. Um, the next component is REIT. Uh, so here, um, you know, can you measure, can you analyze media effectiveness? Search marketing is obviously a big component on digital, so it's all about the organic and AdWords. Um, do, you, do you understand the process of um, online PR and influence outreach? Have you got a broad and, uh, or deep experience on some of these paid uh, media options? And also, can you, can, you create, can you actually create an annual multi-channel plan to achieve uh, the, the, uh, the desired goals? Um, the next component is ACT. Um, so this is about customer journeys, um, lead capture, uh, content marketing. Can you create a plan to engage audiences and get commercial results through content marketing? There's obviously the element of landing pages, being able to understand, generate results. Um, and also the things around campaign planning. Um, a component of it related to convert. And, and by the way, each of these areas are growing extremely fast in, in the marketplace. And, and when I talked about these job titles before, uh, when I showed you all the job titles, it's fascinating thing, growth in each of these areas with multiple uh, components of, of job titles. This area is um, a lot of people are predicting it's one of the biggest uh, and highest paid to get involved in. So, and quite rightly so, because it's, it, it's, uh, it can make the difference between generating thousands and millions of pounds worth of revenue. So, you know, how planning for uh, nurturing, retargeting, personalization is big, mobile experiences um, and, and interaction, multi channel selling, do you, you know, do, uh, do you know how to review and design persuasive multi channel sales experience? Now it's the big area of conversion optimization, uh, which is the knowledge to design and run um, CRO, uh, the acronym, uh, and programs based on different testing and, and relevant tools. And, and the final component here um, is around engagement um, or um, customer service. So, the, the end component about um, reviewing and implementing uh, customer welcome sequences, customer loyalty programs, um, improving service. It could be due, it could be due to the email communications about reviewing business email marketing lifecycle activities um, and having the right email contact strat strategy. Obviously, a big area social media communications. So. Can you, can you review social media presence and communication effectiveness for a business, whether it's paid or organic? So this is, this is the model in full on screen here, um, which you can uh, down, download and have a look at. In terms of how um, the charging and marketing qualifications can help you in becoming this T-shirt marketer, and, and they're, they're amazingly designed to help you become a, uh, more than a t-shirt marketer and to have transferable skills and, and so on. And the, uh, I'm not sure if you're already familiar, if, you, if you've done CM qualifications from a long time ago, you'll know there's certificates, diplomas and so on. Uh, but not many people know that you can actually do an award on its own and gain a qualification. So that's important to, um, to know that. Uh, so, um, if you wanted to do uh, an award in digital strategy, you could do that award on its own. Um, and there's many study centers that you can sign up, up with to be able to do that. So, so look out for that. If you don't want to commit to doing a full nine to 12 month qualification, think about getting this, these bite-sized pieces of knowledge. Um, I also sometimes get asked the question, should, why not just do this for free online, go to a website? Um, and, and some of this content is available free and online. 
But I think what the qualification does, it helps you to structure and organize your thinking. And also it's giving you um, a, an assessment, um, which is one of the most exciting bits about these CM qualifications. The assessment you do has to be based on the organization you're working for or a practical organization. So it's allowing you to take the knowledge and implement it and create some benefit. Certainly some of the students I've taught in the past or we've had um, coming through our centre, the assessment has actually got them job promotions. So they've created a digital strategy for the business and the company's loved it and given them a promotion. Or we've had freelancers and consultants and agencies do these qualifications and a digital strategy for the client company. And that client's turned around and said, actually, can, you, can we do this in real life? So, they, so it's, it's paid the cost of the qualification multiple times over. Um, so I've shared with you three things today, a pathway. Um, I want you to think about getting clarity on the direction and destination that you're going in. Um, an important component to allow you to stay very clear um, on what you're doing now to make sure it's aligned uh, to where you want to be in, in the future. Positioning, uh, create a magnetic presence, like some of the world we're living in. Um, is very different um, in terms of positioning yourself and recruiting because uh, these days you know employers go on to linkedin to find people um, so you've got to really think about positioning yourself proficiency very important you know your skills your whatever you're investing in yourself invest in yourself now so you can earn more into the, earn more in the future so one constant if you are not um uh, investing in yourself, you're not growing as an individual. Um, so this um, growth, growth is important. So I'm just wrapping up the uh, presentation here, and um, <coughs> you can start, you can put any questions in the question box at the bottom. Um, so I've, I've covered a number of things across the road. So I'll start wrapping up this last slide whilst we put questions in. Um, I've covered the three P's um, and I've got another quote here. A year from now, you may be wishing you started today, or five years from now, you'll be wishing you started today. Like I said, you're, you're standing in your own acres of diamonds and you can't let time go past where you're not um, grabbing the opportunities. Um, for some of you, you may have experienced up and down downs in your career. Uh, you may have hit rock bottom. Um, life is life. You know, the message of Ms. Variable come along and bump you on the head. Um, so um, it's important to just to, if you're experiencing um, a bit of a roller coaster ride in your career, so for some people, rock bottom is a trampoline, make sure you bounce back up and, and go for it. I touched a bit on, on state of mind, um, which I wish I could talk more about, because I think it's one of the um, factors that I'm seeing some people fail in. So for example, you might be the best marketer, you might have all the skills, um, you might have all the opportunities around you, you might have been offered jobs, but you're still failing, um, which means it's actually a whole series of other things that might be affecting you from progressing or growing. And it might be related to the state of mind because um, you have to, to succeed um, in anything. You have to be patient, you have to be positive, and you have to be persistent. I see too many people giving up quite easily. If you really want something, you keep going for it. Um, it's like one of my children, uh, my, my daughter, uh, two of my kids will give up. They'll ask for something and give up. But one of my daughter, she'll keep asking for something until she gets it. But she'll keep asking 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times until she gets it. So if you've got ambition and a dream, you have to be persistent in going towards it and aim, aim to get it. Um, there's a couple of things here. Um, I did want to give you an offer for staying and listening uh, to this presentation. So there's two things I'm, I'm going to offer you. And I just want to be specific that um, we're a study centre presenting this. So this is specific to our, our study centre, MMC, which delivers qualifications 100% online. Uh, so number one, uh, happy to do a free discovery call with you. So if you want your CV reviewed on LinkedIn profile, so it's a 30 minute discovery call, uh, ping me a message and I can set that up for you. So 30 minutes where we can review your CV and give you advice on the future um, and future direction, which is always worth uh, doing. Uh, that's quite exciting. 
And secondly, um, because I believe in CM qualifications so much, I know this is going to make a difference to your life. Um, we will, if you want to enroll um, to an award uh, or the full qualification, um, we are committing to paying uh, one of your assessment fees or one module uh, if you want to enroll in the next uh, uh, seven days. So it's uh, something uh, there for you. Uh, so Nick, I think we've got a, a little bit of time for questions. Thank you, Imran. Yes, we're going to um, answer some questions now that have been submitted. Um, as a reminder to everybody there, you can still submit your questions via the chat box in the attendee control panel. So our first question is, in your opinion, do you think having a degree is essential to a successful career in marketing? Um, okay, inter interesting question. Um, so uh, if, I, if I could ask, um, it would be useful to get a deeper understand, uh, understanding of that question. Um, but if I, if I was answering, I think it's important to have a qualification, a, a professional qualification to um, uh, to have a successful career because actually it's organizing your knowledge, you're working towards qualification, you're being assessed, you're being benchmarked, and, and so on. Um, so if the question is more related to a CIM qualification versus a degree, um, is, is an interesting question because we, I mean, if you're based in the UK, because we're having a very interesting times in the UK, because I think the entire education system is going to change with apprenticeship degrees. Um, and so on in the future. So the education system is going to look very different in 10 years' time in the UK. Um, so traditional degrees, um, I don't think, um, uh, they don't, um, I wouldn't be for or against them. Uh, so, so I kind of stand in the middle. There are scenarios where actually a degree is a waste of time. There are scenarios where degrees have been hugely beneficial. So if you are thinking going down degree rate, I would certainly recommend um, you look at the degree in conjunction with a, a professional qualification. Because if you, if you look at any profession um, like accountancy and so on, there's always a professional awarding body uh, which is um, uh, teaching you uh, that. Um, in terms of not um, probably not answering the question very clearly because it depends on which degree it is and who's teaching and what the curriculum is. Um, so the only thing to, uh, and I'm, I've been involved in launching a master's in digital marketing uh, with the Manchester Metropolitan University, and there's many people approaching me with the same question. Um, so um, you've got to look at his teaching it, um, what the experiences of the teachers, what the history is. Um, talk to people who have um, completed the qualification of the degree. That's really important. Speak to, get testimonials, speak to people. Um, is the best way of figuring out uh, whether you go down uh, a degree route. Um, also to think about is, I think the future will always, uh, there will be a future pathway, which in fact exists now. So if you, if, if, if whoever asks this question is, is young and they're thinking of going into a degree, you can actually go down a CM qualification route and work your way up from level three, level four, to get the level six qualification, get the postgraduate format. There's an actual route that you can take if you decided not to do a degree and do a CAM qualification. And, and in fact, that is extremely powerful than just going and doing a two, three year degree in marketing. So there's an alternative there because you can do the CAM qualification, you've got the professional skills, you can be working in an organization. So, so there's, some, there's some exciting pathways and, and opportunities there for you. Okay, thank you, Imran. I have another question for you. Which was the TED talk you recommended? TED, T-E-D, TED talk you recommended? Right, um, so the TED talk um, I recommended is uh, delivered by a guy called Simon Sinek. Uh, so first name is Simon, second name is Sinek, spelled S-I-N-E-K. Um, and the talk is on uh, why. Uh, so he's, he's wrote a book on the why as well. I've got it on the moment. I've got it on my shelf. I have got it on my shelf somewhere. Um, it is, in fact, he's wrote two books. Um, one of them is called Lead the Eat Less, and uh, one of them is called Why. So I just I recommend uh, watching the TED Talk to start off with and then maybe getting the book. 
Thank you, Ingram. Oh, right, I think we have time for another question. Um, I am studying certificate in marketing due to finish in the next three months. I already have the Digital Marketing Award. This is my first step into marketing. I was looking at employment as a marketing assistant to hone my broad practical skills, but as your slide suggests, this linear route is becoming old hat. My heart is in consumer right insights, communications and branding. Any career advice would be greatly received. Okay, brilliant. Uh, yes, yeah, so so the uh, the uh, I mean it's good that you've done the linear route um, because at your level it's good to um, uh, kind of grab uh, the key key foundations in marketing. So you, the modules you've already done um, are, are very good modules. Um, but you're right in terms of the next level, uh, you can um, like I so said, you've got the ability to pick and choose. Uh, some people when they do one qualification, they leave a gap. Uh, so Traditionally, if you see a lot of people, they get the certificate or the diploma and they leave a two-year gap. So what's exciting about these awards is um, they can fill that gap, uh, which is really exciting. So um, if you're um, uh, you know, interested in insights, comms, and analytics, and so on, I can't remember what the topic that the question was just said, um, you, you've got the option, options of doing these uh, individual awards. Um, and there is... Um, uh, I'll put three or three on the slide there, but there's other awards at level six. So you would look at all the level six awards. There's an award in um, the mastering metrics one and um, innovation module uh, for you to have a look at, as well as the digital strategy and digital experience um, side of things as well. Um, but if you want to ping me a message, I can send you some links and people to follow. Um, that would be useful if you're leaders in these areas that you can be following their blogs and what they're tweeting about. Thank you, Wiman. Um, I have another question for you. I'm a marketing executive and I have three plus years of experience and a CIM diploma, level six. And given my knowledge, I feel the position is still for a beginner. Where would you see someone with this background? Okay, so three plus years experience and a beginner. Um, it, it really depends on um, where where you're trying to get to, and um, which industry you're um, working in, and to understand why why you still feel like uh, feel like a beginner. Um, so if you've got the knowledge and you've got the experience, um, maybe there's something else that, which is not challenging you. Uh, you, you're going to have to really think deeply about what what is it that you're not being challenged, and also what is it. Um, I've talked. Uh, I mean, if you do some of the exercises in this presentation, you'll certainly figure this out. Um, is to think ahead. You know, what what do you? Um, why do you feel like a beginner? Um, and and how would you break out of, out of feeling like a beginner? And also, is it a limitation inside your own brain? Do you feel like a beginner, but you're actually an, an advanced individual? Because if you've already got the level six and you've got three years of experience, um, you're, you're probably um, being uh, a bit hard on yourself. So, so I think I think you're um, uh, you, you, you've probably uh, made uh, a lot more progress uh, than where you are now. Uh, so maybe have a think about the future. Where do you want to be? Um, I mean, do you feel as though you would want to become a manager or manage people? Uh, do you want to, what kind of organisations you want to work with? Um, the, you can progress um, if if it's knowledge that you feel if it's knowledge that's holding you um, hold, holding you back. Uh, if it's knowledge that's holding you back, then um, uh, maybe think about the next qualification of. Um, uh, if you if you want to um, take up that one further, there's also um, chartered marketer status you could be working towards. Um, so if you if you feel that your pathway is being restricted, there are other things you could be doing at the next level. And there's a leadership marketing leadership program as well that you could be looking at. Uh, so there's many there's many pathways um, that you can potentially uh, go through. Thank you again, Imran. I do have another question for you. We've had quite a few questions coming in. Do, um, this is quite an interesting one. Do you think being reluctant to shout about your own good work links to the quote, you're either remarkable or invisible? Uh, so it's a good question. Um, and 
the, I could spend hours answering this question, if I can think of a fast, uh, quickest way of answering it. So, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're into personal development, which I've been for a number of years, um, there is something called self, self-sabotage. I don't know if you come across it. Um, and there are the people, some people who have achieved success. Um, there is, um, uh, when they get to that success, they do, there is this concept of um, uh, this reluctancy or playing yourself down. And in fact, I've just had a question around it as well, because I, whoever asked that, that question, I bet they're very good at what they do, but they're saying they feel, feel like a beginner. So um, I, I think, um, again, it's important. I, I think it does happen quite a lot. Um, and, and there's all kinds of scenarios, you know, probably come across imposter syndrome and, and, and a couple of these things. Um, so I think you've got to, um, and, and some people, that are, they're reluctant to talk about themselves because they feel arrogant um, and, and so on, and or, or whatever their uh, beliefs are. They don't believe they should shout out about their own, um, but there's ways of doing it, um, that, which is, Without being arrogant, you can um, talk about yourself and, and your achievements and, and so on. Um, and I think it it it, it probably happens in um, uh, certain scenarios more than others. It's interesting because my uh, my eldest daughter is going to is going to high school next year, and we put her, put her into a school in Manchester. And one of the ethos of the school is a girls' school, um, and um, what one of the studies they found was that girls uh, growing up through high school, they're very, and, and this came up, they don't want to talk about the wins. They don't want to talk about the successes. They're very, it's a very reserved, uh, it's a very reserved thing. And that might be specific to, um, uh, to the culture of the, of the, of the UK. Um, so, so there is this and that, um, that's there. Um, but I think it's important just to analyze it and figure out how you present um, your skills and your wins in, in different ways are suitable uh, for you. But I think there should be more of it. I think more people, if people have had success, they should be shouting out about it and, and sharing and giving. And, and, and also the human need, which is to share, uh, contribute uh, to other people. I think sharing your, your wins um, will influence and inspire others. Uh, so, so I think that should be there. I'll balance with that, okay. Thank you, Imran. Um, we've just got time for one final question, and that is, what's the ideal entry role for a new marketer who's had a seven-year career in advertising as an art director to realistically aim for? Amazing. So seven-year seven year advertising uh, art director. I'm looking at an entry-level marketing role. Is it? Yes, the question is, what's the ideal entry role for a new marketer who's had a seven-year career in advertising as an art director to realistically aim for? Okay. Um, yeah, it's an interesting question. I probably need to dive into it a bit further on why, uh, why it should be an entry-level role in marketing. Um, and the reason is if, the, if this individual's already got experience as a director and, and seven years, although it might be in a different field. Um, so the question, would, the question I'd be asking is, um, is what marketing knowledge do you already have? Uh, and what I'm finding is, you know, people in different disciplines, although they have, have had a different title or they're different, they've been exposed to a lot of marketing. And there is a diagnostic tool that you can use which benchmarks, uh, CAM diagnostic, which ben benchmarks uh, your knowledge. So I'd probably recommend you do that just to see where, you really, where your marketing knowledge really is. Is it, at a, is it at an entry level or is it at a diploma level? So I certainly recommend um, looking, at, uh, looking at that. Um, there, are, um, uh, there are certain types of marketing uh, skills which I think are cross-cutting. If you learn these skills, um, You'd you'd hit any entry level role or even even senior roles. So them skills are um, uh, include content, copy, creativity, um, and, and and so on. So these these are or use experience. 
So the, these are roles which cut, cut across all uh, fragmented digital disciplines and, and so on. So I'd probably think about um, widening to that. If, again, if you want to ping me a message, I'd need to have a look at your LinkedIn profile in a bit more detail. But if you want to ping me a message, I can jump on a 30 minute call with you and give you some advice on that. Thank you, Imran. Um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. So I'm sorry if you've not been able to answer your question. I'd like to say thank you to you, Imran, for presenting this webinar and thank you to everyone for attending today. Once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation and we appreciate it if you could provide your feedback. On behalf of CIM, thank you for joining us today and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.